Welcome to Let's Talk. Happy New Year! For today's meditation, we will be looking at one of the most popular verses that is found in Jeremiah. And that's none other than Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Let's read that together. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Well, we have all used or received this passage in our greeting cards, congratulating graduates, wishing well for the youngsters and people who have just begun a new job or a new endeavor in life. Um, it's a passage that's used often to encourage or to give hope uh, for a future. And we also often hear this as a promise message or a blessing message, especially during the New Year's time. Um, but you should also be aware that this is one of the most misused and misunderstood passages. Um, well, don't get me wrong, it's not, uh, not anything else. It's a very fitting verse for such occasions, but not in the way that many people understand it. It's one of those verses that we as Christians, um, we use it without exploring the true meaning in its context. And so let's see uh, the context of this verse. Well, these words were spoken to the prophet Jeremiah at the time of Judah's uh, fall to Babylon. Uh, in verse 4, if you see, you will uh, see the, that this message was addressed to those who were carried from Jerusalem to Babylon into exile. And the people of God, uh, people of Israel, God's chosen ones, uh, thought that nothing can befall them because uh, they were protected by Yahweh through the covenant. And however, you, as you read, you will um, see that the rebellion of these people and their constant disobedience ultimately leads to the destruction of the Davidic dynasty and the Jerusalem temple. And not only that, but they are taken as captive to a foreign nation to be slaves. So the nation is destroyed, their hope on the Davidic dynasty is cut off, their confidence on the temple to protect them is gone. And they believe that because uh, of God's covenant with David and the presence of the temple, nothing would happen to them. Yet, God destroys both. Um, the Davidic kingdom is no more and the temple is in ruin. The whole nation of Judah is devastated and many are in exile. They are longing to return to their nation, having suffered destruction, shame, loss, and misery. They desperately seek to go back to their home. And it is during this time that we also see many false prophets telling them, don't give up, there's still hope. God will do another miracle like he did in the past. Um, if you want to further read on that, you can look into Jeremiah chapter 28, but we won't go further into that. But Jeremiah's message, um, he says that there is no last minute miracle on the way. The judgment of God is going to fall. There is no hope for immediate return. So is this good news? No, this is definitely bad news. It's like inflicting another blow on the wound that you already have. Um, it is uh, in the middle of this bad news though that we find this remarkable verse of comfort and hope in verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. This verse in the middle of a people who are in exile. Destruction is negative. It brings hardship, pain, and misery naturally. But have you ever wondered um, if destruction can be the means to the new order, a new beginning, a new life? The whole Bible points to it if you actually pay close attention. Whether it's Noah's days or the end times, the message is the same. And that's exactly what we see in this chapter as well. The old has to go in order for the new to come. However, this is not a message that the Israelites wanted to hear, for the Israelites are in bondage, in exile, in Babylon. They want to return to their home. They want to return to their land as early as possible. And yet, Jeremiah says, stay there. Imagine their plight. Even while they are in exile, though, God intends to build them. 
God wants to raise them from nothingness to newness. He intends to bring about a new thing in and through their devastated state, in and through their humiliation, in and through their despair. Wherever they are, in the very state of nothingness, God intends to bring a new thing in them. Although the people Jeremiah was writing to had real cause to believe that God's thoughts towards them were evil, God speaks this message of hope. Let's listen to it again. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. If you've noticed, you will see that three times the word plan is mentioned in this single word. The word plan is emphasized. So we must ask, what is this plan? Well, in verse 5, Jeremiah tells them to settle down in Babylon, to build houses and to plant gardens and not hope for a speedy return to their native lands. Let's read Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 5 and 6. Build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce, marry and have sons and daughters, find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. Interesting, isn't it? Living as slaves in Babylon would not be a pleasant experience, and to hear this discouraging message of Jeremiah would have certainly caused many of them to think that God had only evil thoughts concerning them. But the thoughts of God toward his children are always those of peace, not of evil. Yet the way of peace is not in the way that is expected, not in the way that we think verse 11 before he shares um, the promise if you know Jeremiah gives this directive from God seek peace and the prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers you will prosper pray to the Lord for Babylon because if Babylon prospers you will prosper. This is not at all what the Israelites wanted to hear. Least of all to pray for the nation that destroyed and enslaved them. They wanted to be told that they're going home. They wanted to be told that their suffering was going to end. Instead, God's plan was for them to stay right where they were and to help them prosper in the nation that enslaved them. And they, then comes the biggest blow of all. In verse 10, God says that he would bring them home only after 70 years are completed in Babylon. 70 years of exile. This meant that none in the current generation of Israelites would ever return to their home. Yes, it is a state of nothingness hopelessness, darkness, and yet God's command is to build, to live, to thrive. That's the message of Jeremiah. They are not going home, and yet they will thrive in exile. In looking at this chapter, we can learn something about responding to negative surroundings. When we are not where we want to be, how should we respond? Well, God says, trust Him, live, thrive. New life is there in and through suffering, destruction, misery, and humiliation. In this new year that we are so looking forward to, COVID-19 might not go away. And yet, life must continue. We must strive to make the best of the situation that we are presently in. We cannot just sulk and be there in our self-pity and misery and not live our life. Out of nothingness, out of misery, out of destruction, God will still make something new. What hard thing are you currently going through? Is it unemployment? 
a loss of a loved one, maybe destruction in the family, disharmony, maybe it's depression. Well, in the midst of your suffering, cling to Jeremiah 29, 11, but cling to it for the right reasons, not for the false hope that God will just take away all your suffering and everything will be fine, but in the true gospel confidence that He will give you hope in the midst of it, in the midst of your suffering. My friends, God has a plan for you and me. He wants to prosper us. He wants to give us hope. He yearns for a loving relationship with us. But we need to destroy the old ways so that God can bring something new in us. Are you willing to do that? We need to turn to Him and seek Him while He still can be found. And as we enter into this new year, 2021, it is my sincere prayer that God will make things new in the very place that you are and that you will be blessed abundantly by Him who is worthy of all our praise. God bless you and Happy New Year.